Hello and welcome to a video on triangle congruence shortcuts. Now this is an introduction and we're going to see two shortcuts. Now these are shortcuts to what? Well, if you look or think about our original idea of congruent triangles, you'll remember that for two triangles to be congruent, all six parts need to be congruent. Corresponding parts have to match up. So all three angles have to match up on one triangle with all three angles of another triangle and the same thing with the three sides. But it turns out that there's some shortcuts that we can use that make this a little bit easier um, so we don't need to have all six parts and we can still reach the same conclusion. The triangles are congruent. All right, so let's look at our first shortcut. And the first one is called side, side, side. And what this shortcut is saying is that if three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then the angles will also be congruent. And so the triangles will be congruent. And so in this first diagram with triangle ABC and triangle uh, DEF, you can see that the three sides are marked congruent. And so with the way that, that the um, congruent shortcut works is if you can conclude, and we can see it here, so we can conclude it. If we see it in a diagram or we're told, we're told in some kind of words, then we know that those sides are congruent. But if you see that AB, like this one right here, AB is congruent to ED. So AB is congruent to ED, segment ED. And you also see here that there's two marks on BC and two marks on EF, so they're congruent as well. So BC, segment BC, is congruent to segment EF. And finally, the third segments are also congruent, so AC has three tick marks, and so does DF, so they're congruent. So we can also say that um, AC is congruent to uh, df, then that's enough to say that the triangles are congruent. In other words, you don't need to be told also that the angles are congruent. That's why it's a shortcut. So our conclusion would be that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle, and we still have to be, we have to be careful here, so we still have to make sure that we know what angle goes with what. So based on the way I look at this, I see that angle A is between the one tick mark and the three. So that's going to be congruent to the one between the one and the three here. These triangles are kind of easy to see because they're not rotated or anything to makes it just makes it a little bit easier. So A has to go with D, B has to go with E, and C has to correspond with F. Okay, so that's called side, side, side. There's a second shortcut that we're going to look at here that, de that depends first on this key concept of included angles. We have to understand what an included angle is before we can move forward here. So an included angle is nothing other than the angle between two sides. So in any two sides, there's still three angles, but only one of the angles is included between the two sides. And in this case, I'm just going to show you, it's, it's this one would be the included angle, and the other two here would be considered non-included angles. Over here, it's this one that's the included angle, and the other two are non-included. And on the third triangle, it would be this one. It would be the included angle. I'm not marking it because it's congruent to anything. I'm not saying these three are congruent in these different triangles. I'm just saying that that's the angle that would be considered the included angle. All right, so let's look at a, at a, a couple of examples here. So here is the first example. We're looking at these, uh, this diagram that has really three triangles in it. And we're given a couple of angles. So I'm going to mark them, see if we can figure out which one included, and then I'll erase it and start again. So AB is here, and DB is this one right here. So those are the two angles that are marked. The angle that's included is the one that's between those two sides. It would be here. They form this angle right here. So this would be the included angle in here, right in there. So that's angle ABD, angle A. B, D. I'll do the other two on here and then you can try the other example. Um, I will pause the video and you try the other example. All right, so let's erase and try again. Let's look at DC. So DC is right here and DB. So DB is right here. So the included angle would be the one that's between the two of them. So we'll say angle C, D, B. You could say angle B, D, C. Either one means the same thing. All right, so we'll say angle C, D, B. Okay, and the last one, let's look at the two sides that are included here. So the two sides, I mean, the two sides that are given. So 
side AD is right here, and side DB is right here. So we're looking at the included angle being this one in here. So that's angle ADB. Angle ADB. Okay, why don't we pause the video and you try the same thing with the, these two triangles over here with the WX and B and Y and Z. Okay, so I wrote the three included angles down. And one thing to keep in mind is that notice for the middle one here, I only called it angle W. That's because with the angle over here, angle the angle here that's W, I could have called it angle XWV or angle VWX or even included the Z in the name. But since there's only one angle at that vertex, there's only one angle at the vertex, I can just use angle W for that name. I couldn't have done that for the vertex of V because over here there's actually several angles at that vertex. So we can't just call it angle V or we won't know whether we're talking about this angle over here, this angle over here, this one up here. Of course we're probably not since it's not in the triangle, but we won't know which one of these two it is. So we can't use the one letter method for the first or the third, but we can for the middle one. So if you can, uh, Go ahead and save the time of writing all three letters. All right, so let's look at our second shortcut. Side angle side, abbreviated SAS. So this one says that if two sides and the included angle, now we know what that means, the included angle of one triangle is congruent to two sides and the included angle of another triangle, that's enough to say the triangles are congruent. If those three parts are congruent, it's guaranteed that the other three parts will be congruent too. So what that's saying, it's just, going by the markings over here, is that if side AB is congruent to side DE, so if side AB is congruent to side DE, and side, uh, and the angle, we'll, go, we'll do the angle next since it's SAS, we're just going to go in order, SAS. So the angle, and this time we can call it angle B, we don't have to say anything more because of the reason I just explained it's the only angle at that vertex angle B is congruent to angle E and the third side or the side on the other side BC and EF are congruent so BC is congruent to EF then we can say the triangles are congruent so we can say triangle A B, C is congruent to triangle, and I'm going to match A with D. I'm going to match B with E, obviously, because it's marked congruent. And I'm going to match C with F. All right, that's side angle side. So we've got two triangle shortcuts, and there's actually more, but for today we're just going to work on these two. And we're going to look at a couple of examples, and here's what, here's what the problems are going to look like. You're going to be given some information it could be already shown in the diagram, but in these examples, I'm going to give you information and you're going to have to show it in the diagram. That's one of the steps that's part of the process. So you're going to be given information. You're going to use that information to mark up the diagram so that it looks like one of these. Hopefully it will look like one of these um, marked diagrams that we saw here in the first example with side, 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 or here with side, angle, side. Or if it's neither, you're going to say there's not enough information. All right, so you're going to mark the diagrams, determine which shortcut, or say there's not enough information, it's neither shortcut, or um, you're going to, and, and then after that, you're going to state the congruent statements. So you're going to match up, and this is the congruent statement. These right here are our congruent statements, and these are our shortcuts. The shortcuts are just the abbreviations for side, angle, side, or side, side, side. All right, so let's try this. So let's look at the first one. So we're given PQ. Now we're going to mark this onto the diagram, so we have to find it first. So PQ is congruent to ST. So PQ is over here, and that's congruent to ST on the other side. All right, that's one. I can put a little check there. QR is congruent to TR. So QR is right here, QR, and TR is right here. Now notice I gave those two marks because it's not the same. We're not saying that QR is the same as PQ, for example, so we don't want to mark them with one mark. We want to use two. All right, now here's the one that you have to remember what midpoint means. And remember, you're told here that R is the midpoint of the segment PX. So that means that this point R 
is right in the middle. Now you don't want to mark anything on R. That's not what this is about. This is just about recognizing R is in the middle and therefore what's congruent is PR. And let's put three marks there and RS. Those are the ones that are congruent. Okay, so it looks like we have side, side, side. We have all three parts are given. So that's going to be my next step. I'm going to determine which shortcut, and in this case, it's side, side, side. All right, now I've got to write a congruent statement. So my congruent statement, I'm going to start with the first triangle, and I usually just go in alphabetical order. So I'm going to look at the first triangle, and the first letter in the alphabet is P. So I'm going to start with triangle P, Q, R. Again, that's alphabetical order. You don't have to do it that way, but um, that's congruent, not similar. So two equal and then a congruent mark. All right, and that's congruent to triangle. Now you do have to be careful that you match them up correctly again. So P, if you look at this, between one tick mark and three tick marks, that's P. That's got to correspond with S over here because that's also between one and three tick marks. All right, so P corresponds with S. Q is down here on the bottom. It corresponds with T. And R corresponds, well, the, this is the part where you have to kind of be careful. Both of these R's here are congruent. Now, technically, you would never call that angle R. But in the triangle congruent statement, we don't have any other way to do it. So this is angle R here. Uh, we're just going to say that's the R right there. Okay, so just be careful of that one. All right, and there you go. Let's look at the next example. All right, so the next example, we're given V is the midpoint of WZ. So V is the midpoint of WZ. So here's segment WZ. Here, here's V is right in the middle. Uh, let me just highlight the segment. WZ is right here. And V is right in the middle. Remember, we don't mark anything in the middle. We just mark these two things congruent. So this one is congruent to this one. In other words, WV is congruent to VZ. All right, let's do the same thing with the other side. On the other side, we're told, and we're only doing it because we're told here, that V is also the midpoint of XY. So now I'm, I just showed XY. V is right in the middle. So I'm going to mark these two pieces here. Oops, I'm going to do it in black. These two here are congruent to each other. Now it also says, it says mark the diagram according to what's given. We did that. And the vertical angles. Now vertical angles are always congruent, so let's mark them congruent. So this angle here is congruent to this angle here. All right, now which shortcut are you seeing? Well, I see two sides in the included angle. That's side angle side. All right, we, we got our shortcut. Now again, I, I can just start with anything. I'm just going to call it um, WVX. Let's see, UVW. I'll start with VWX. So that's in alphabetical order. So triangle V, W, X is congruent to, and the V's correspond, so I'm going to put the V right there. The W, let's be careful here, the W is next to the one tick mark, right? So we have to look over here next to the one tick mark, and it looks like W corresponds with Z. So W, Z, and then X has to correspond with Y. And there we go. We've got our shortcut. We've got our congruent statement.